Fabrizio Romano confirms that Chelsea have continued their work to sign Jean Duran. He's not the only name they're looking at, but the player wants Chelsea and all parties, including Aston Villa and the player side, are still discussing the terms of the deal. We're going to delve into this in more details, plus look at confirmation that Arsenal and Victor Washerman's agent have been talking. The Ivan Tony price has been set. And bad news potentially for Tottenham fans as Real Madrid comes circling for one of your leading stars. Hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribing. Get in the Football Terrace transfer group chat. We also put all our notifications in there as well for our shows. Scan the QR code or click on the link below to do it. Let's go! Duran Duran, it's an interesting transfer story to say the least because it, just watching the Chelsea fan base react to this has been so interesting. I want to start actually by saying that uh, I was given some false information yesterday. I was told by somebody I trusted that man like Ches and my brother Don uh, were gassed about the signing. Turns out that wasn't strictly true. So I apologize about putting that uh, information out there yesterday. Obviously, they're my boys. They're a big part of the football terrace. We love them dearly here. And it was only a little bit of a joke, but uh, that isn't true. So nobody nobody give them any stick over that. As of right now, I don't know what they're going to say in the future, but they haven't said that as of right now. But I see it having the, the Chelsea fan base, I wouldn't even say divided. Divided makes it sound 50-50. But Chelsea fans are quite frustrated and quite angry at this approach. But Chelsea are pushing on regardless. Fabrizio here confirms that all parties involved, Chelsea, Villa and the players' side, are working hard on the terms of this deal. He isn't the only individual that Chelsea are looking at, but they are, as it appears, when reading this, unless I'm misinterpreting it, they're prioritising Duran right now. This deal looks like, as of right now, it could truly happen. And I, I have to ask Chelsea fans this question. It's definitely a cheaper option than an Ivan Tony, which we'll get onto. You're talking about £60 million Brentford are asking for today. Of course, it's much cheaper than a Victor Ossiman, Ush- um, who you're looking at £100 plus million pound to land. Shisko is no longer a viable option. But wouldn't Chelsea be better off looking at other areas of the attacking line, potentially, than another raw, young Yes, there's some excitement about him because of what he could become, but you already have that potentially in Nicholas Jackson. I did read something, and I don't remember who wrote this, saying that that they think if he gets the chances that Nicholas Jackson had, he'll finish more opportunities. And I think that's a fair take. I think that's a fair take. I just haven't maybe seen enough of this guy. But the question is, why haven't we seen enough of him? He barely gets picked by Unai Emery. Villa are in a, a better team right now than Chelsea. And they finished above them in the league, and they don't want him. So many questions. I want to get your take. I want to get your views on this in the comments section below. Staying in London, confirmed by the agent, confirmed by the agent of Victor Osiman, that he is waiting on the Premier League where his agent is talking to Arsenal. Without offers in Europe, it seems certain that Osiman will move to Saudi Arabia. So essentially what's happening here, Napoli... It looks like the, the rumors that Napoli need to sell are true. So far, no offers from anybody in Italy, no offers from anybody in Spain, and it, Arsenal and the agent are talking. This sends off alarm bells in my head. We've been speaking about this a lot recently on the terrace. There is my subjective feeling, and I quite like Victor Usherman. What I've seen from him over, I just said Usherman again, I meant Ossiman. Sorry, my dyslexic brain does that to me sometimes. I apologize. When I've watched him play, I've always been quite impressed. I know he didn't have a great AFCON. Granted, he didn't. But I've seen great players not have good international tournaments before. I don't think it's the the be-all and end-all to go, he's good or he's bad. I've seen him play very, very well for Napoli. I've seen him score excellent goals. I've seen him be dominant. I personally quite like him. 
But something I'm more inclined to do now than ever before is look at things objectively. Take my own emotions out, my own feelings out, because my opinion is, is important. I think he's good. I think teams in England should go for him. But you shouldn't ignore what everybody else has got to say. And the fact that nobody in Europe is willing to pay anywhere near Napoli's valuation is a red flag for, is he really as good as I think he is? Now, this story that Arsenal are in talks with him, I think it's agent talk. I think it's agent talk. I feel that Arsenal probably have spoke to his agent. But I think it's the agent making the move. I think it's the agent doing the pushing. And I'm not sure if there's any tangible belief by anybody whatsoever that Arsenal are going to make an official approach for him. Of course, this has come from Giovanni Scotto, who is, by all accounts, a, a, a credible name and journalist out of Italy. I'm not going to step on him at all. He, I feel like he's been told by the agent, I'm in talks with Arsenal. That could be true, but we could all make that claim and it'd be legally sound. Now, I could phone Arsenal Football Club today and say, oh, guys, I've been in discussions with Arsenal. <laughs> it's true, but I might have just been ask, asking what time the museum opens. <laughs> what, how much is a sta stadium door? You know, it's, it's obviously going to be a deeper conversation than that. But I believe this is agent talk. Now, I know there might be some gooners out there that disagree with me. Fair play. That's what we're here for. We're here for disagreements on the footballing level. Let us know in the comments section below. What do you think about these talks that the agent and the Italian press are pushing? Now, kind of staying in London, but also mentioning Manchester United here. Brentford, according to this report today, are standing firm on their 60 million valuation for Ivan Tony. They won't be accepting cut price deals for the striker this summer. That is Brentford, who are pushing back against stories that £40 million will be enough to sign, again, another striker that I personally think is excellent in Ivan Tony. Now, it's a really interesting story, because a year ago, you were talking £80 million plus, £80 million plus to sign the player. Then it's dropped down to 40 million. Now we're hearing 60 million. And a lot of this is public negotiation. Some of it will come from the players' side, some from Brentford, some of it from teams that want to buy him. I still think at 60 million pounds, you're getting an excellent striker. I've seen a lot of people lose their vim, cash in their stocks on Ivan Tony. And I personally haven't done that as well. And I'm not too sure why. I'm really not too sure why people have changed their minds about him. I think his hold-up play is top class. I think with enough opportunities being created, he will score you goals. He has leadership capabilities. He has experience. And I keep hearing this, he has a bad attitude. Show me the story. Show me the examples. Show me the anecdotal evidence of that, at least. The only example I ever get de demonstrated is when he was in a, 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 a beach party or a club and he was with a young lady and he said, I'm, I don't really want to swear, but he said, Brentford. And that isn't a good look. And I would hate him to be a United player and for him to turn around and do that. At the same time, I was young once. I was better looking once. And when there's the lady who is giving you attention and you're like, yeah, I, I, I fancy a little bit of this. You know, I, I fancy a little bit of a midnight cuddle a little bit of a horizontal hula. Sometimes, especially when you're a little bit liquored up, bruv, or as we say where I'm from, when you're a bit mashed up, sometimes you can say and do things that you wouldn't normally do. And again, I'm not going to judge a man on that unless you, you, you're you teetotal, unless you've never been surrounded by beautiful women. I don't know. Maybe you don't see it that way. Maybe that's not your bag. Maybe you spend your weekends playing Minecraft. And that's fine. That's a beautiful thing to do. Maybe you spent your adolescence, your early, your, your, your late teen years, your early 20s, watching WWE, watching cartoons, drawing, going to the library. Maybe, and there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you don't get it. But I don't think he's got a bad attitude. Is he worth the 60 million pound? Let us know in the comments section below. Now, Spurs fans, this report here out of ESPN Argentina that Real Madrid have inquired over the possibility of signing Christian Romero. I have two thoughts on this. Spurs fans are going to hate me, but stay with me. I think he's good. 
to very good. Is he Real Madrid level? I'm not sure. But he was part of a team that won a World Cup. So again, my subjectivity versus my objectivity at play here. I think he's good to very good. Is he Real Madrid level? Does he have the Real Madrid club mentality? I'm not sure. I'm 50-50. Is he a little bit too temperamental? You could say, well, Sergio Romero was. But listen, Sergio Romero was a cut above. So I think you can take that risque, dangerous, a little bit of a loose cannon approach if your talent level is world-class and beyond. When it's below that, you have to think about it differently. The objective element of this, though, is it, if it's true and they do try to sign him or do indeed get him from Spurs, it does prove Spurs fans right, potentially, that he's a top player because I have to be true and I have to be consistent. The clubs that try to buy you is a very clear and tangible indication of how good or how bad you really are. And I'm talking about not the history of that club, but the current situation that club finds themselves in where they are in the pecking order. Are they winning trophies? Are they, because you can't compare AC Milan wanting you now to AC Milan wanting you in 2005. You can't compare Ajax wanting you now to Ajax wanting you in 1995 would be my example. But Real Madrid seemingly want him. Spurs fans, give us your thoughts. Give us your feelings in the comments section below. Thank you all for tuning in. As I say, I'm, I'm always humbled every single day that you will do. The football terrace community is the best out there supporting channels like ours listen until next time take care goodbye god bless and i'll see you soon peace